everyone. My name is Marcus Alt, and I am a clinical health psychologist at the University of Kansas Medical Center. Um, it's my honor to be here today to, to speak with you about what it means to be a psychologist, um, how I found myself uh, becoming a psychologist, what that journey has looked like, um, and I'll tell you a little bit about kind of what the typical day uh, looks like for, for a psychologist. Um, so I'm happy to be a part of this today. I wish I was able to be there in person. Um, and I hope you don't mind uh, me shooting this from home. This has actually been my office for the last several months due to COVID. It's really, really kind of forced us to have to change things quite a bit. Um, to kind of give you a little bit of background of myself, I'm actually from Norfolk, Nebraska. Uh, I currently live in Kansas City, but um, was born and raised in, in Northeast Nebraska, so not, not too far from, from Wayne. Um, I know the town well. Um, so as I mentioned before, I am a clinical health psychologist. Um, many people don't necessarily know what it means to be a psychologist. There are a lot of kind of misconceptions or maybe misunderstandings um, about what a psychologist is, what a psychologist does, um, the kinds of degrees or training um, that a psychologist requires or needs in order to, to practice. And so you know, today I will um, hopefully shed some light on, on some of those things and maybe provide some clarification about it. And I'll really do so through talking a little bit about my journey, my experience, how I kind of came to be. Um, now, I, I want to also kind of preface with what I'm saying uh, with the fact that there are a lot of different kinds of psychologists. There are a lot of different um, kind of different areas of specialty um, that have their own individual track school psychologists, social psychologists, developmental psychologists, industrial organizational psychologists, they kind of work more uh, with different businesses and things like that, um, child psychologists, forensic psychologists, and myself, a clinical psychologist. So I'm just gonna be speaking to the clinical psychologist role. Uh, if, if psychology is something that you are interested in, I would certainly encourage you to maybe find a faculty member um, at, at the school, in the department, um, and, and maybe learn a little bit more of their experiences as well. If clinical psychology isn't the kind of psychology that you're interested in, I certainly would encourage you to, to maybe seek out um, some clarification from someone who fits that role too. So talking a little bit about my, my academic journey, um, I went to undergrad at Creighton University in Omaha, Nebraska. I majored in psychology there, and that was kind of my first foray to psychology. I had no kind of personal background, no real understanding growing up what it meant to be a psychologist. There were no mental health providers in my family, um, anything like that. So I actually went to uh, college with the intention of going to medical school, uh, maybe being a cardiologist, something like that. But it was my first psychology undergrad course that I became really fascinated by um, human interaction. And I knew that I always wanted to go into the health profession. Um, and so because that class really, really fascinated me, I found myself taking a number of different psychology electives. And the more that I took those classes, the more interested I became. And so what I did was I actually set up a meeting with one of the faculty members in the, the psychology department there to, to kind of understand what it means to be a psychologist and how one can be a helper as a psychologist. And she told me a lot about clinical or counseling psychology um, and, and what that looked like. And that was very appealing to me. So what I did was I applied for doctoral programs in, um, in psychology. Now, Different people kind of take different paths to, to the doctoral program, the PhD program. Some uh, take some time to work, maybe get some research under their belt, uh, kind of amp up their credentials. Some pursue a master's degree first to, to kind of bolster their resume and make them more appealing as an applicant. Um, I was fortunate enough to, to be able to be admitted into a doctoral program directly from undergrad, which, which doesn't always happen. Um, typically, um, to be a psychologist, the doctoral program lasts anywhere from five to six years. So in addition to undergrad, you're in school for another five to six years. Now, part of that training is balancing coursework, clinical work, research, teaching. Um, the courses really are focused on therapeutic theory, um, statistics, research methods, supervision and training, and, and just kind of different practical issues when it comes to psychology and when it comes to uh, mental health care. 
clinically, that was a really, really important part of uh, my graduate training as well. So each year we would uh, be placed in a different practicum experience, basically um, a location where we were able to work one-on-one -on -one with patients or clients. That could be anywhere from a specific hospital setting, a community mental health care setting. Um, I worked in a women's center actually one year, a university counseling setting. You might do neuropsych assessments. There's a pretty um, wide array of, of the types of settings and locations that you might provide clinical support during your practicum experiences. And as you'll see, um, there's a lot of different potential areas that psychologists, clinical psychologists can practice as well. One big part, um, or another big part rather, of my doctoral training was research. Um, as many of you know, the dissertation is a, a very significant and necessary part of earning your PhD. It's kind of the, the ultimate um, accomplishment. It's your own individual research study that you work on for, for several years. You defend it to um, a, a panel of, uh, of practicing psychologists, licensed psychologists, faculty members often. Um, and, and they basically then sign off and say, you did a good job on it, or they might provide some suggestions. It's a pretty big task. And so it becomes really important that you have the research foundation um, leading up to that point. Now, your dissertation defense is at the end of your training. And so you're doing a lot of research throughout uh, the several years leading up to that, working closely with your academic advisor um, or maybe other faculty as well, Pub publishing, for example, developing different projects, things like that. So research is also a big component. I would say those two, the clinical piece of it, so seeing patients, seeing clients, and then the research part of it um, are probably the two main pieces of being a, a psychologist. Um, now for me, right now in what I do, I'm much more clinically focused, which I'll touch on in a bit. So as I said, the graduate program typically lasts five or six years. In addition to the dissertation, one necessary piece of completing your PhD is going through what we call a clinical internship. Um, now what this looks like is you apply to a lot of different settings across the country, VA hospitals, university counseling centers, for example, um, major medical centers, depending on what area of interest you have. If you're more interested in health psychology, you might lean a bit more to the, the hospital settings, the VAs, the academic medical centers. If you're someone who's a little bit more focused on things like community mental health, um, you might lean a bit more towards the university counseling um, centers. But your internship is one year that is fully focused on clinical development, um, where you are embedded almost like you are a part of the, the staff there. You're seeing patients and clients regularly. You're receiving very close supervision um, by the psychologist there to really kind of round out your, your experience. After that, you complete it successfully, you've earned your PhD. The next step is licensure. Now, the thing with being a psychologist, it's a protected term. You actually have to um, earn your license. Now, different states have different requirements for what licensure entails. Um, oftentimes, your graduate experience is gonna help you meet all of those necessary requirements. So you go through the application process, ensure that you've met the necessary requirements and then you're able to practice in that respective state. Right now, I um, have the opportunity to practice both in um, Missouri and Kansas. Kansas City is kind of right on the border, so I practice and license in both. Um, for me, uh, what I do at the University of Kansas Medical Center, I actually am a bit more specialized in what we call oncopsychology or cancer psychology. It's a pretty sub, um, subspecialty of health psychology as a whole. Now, after your internship, you earn your PhD. There, for many people, becomes um, an opportunity for some more specialized training. And that's what's called a fellowship. I was able to do my fellowship in cancer psychology. Um, and so that allowed me an opportunity to kind of focus a bit more on the track that I find myself on now. So I did my fellowship in cancer psychology and oncopsychology at University of Kansas Medical Center, um, and then was fortunate enough to be hired on as faculty there. So I've been doing that for about four years, um, and that's my focus. Every day I am working with people who've been diagnosed with cancer, uh, providing psychotherapy with them, their family members, um, 
really, I'm an active part, I would say, of their, their overall cancer care. Um, I feel fortunate to, to be a part of a program that, um, that really acknowledges and recognizes the importance of mental health uh, in managing physical health as well. What we do know is that there's a really close relationship between mind and body. And so our mental health has an impact on how we are doing physically. And so it becomes an essential part of individuals' cancer care. Um, so kind of my typical week, kind of running through what that looks like. I would say about 20, 28 of my 40 to 45, usually it's more 45 hours a week, 28 of those hours are spent doing the clinical work. So that means seeing patients for individual psychotherapy, um, might be doing different evaluations. So things like um, different diagnostic assessments, pre-transplant evaluations, um, for different treatment protocols that people might be going through. Um, through my training, I'm able to also do brief neuropsychological assessments, more of the screeners rather than kind of the long batteries, usually we refer them out to neuropsychologists, which is a different kind of focus with psychology. Um, that's kind of the main clinical uh, focus. Now I'll touch a little bit later on what therapy actually is, what it looks like, why it's important. But in addition to the therapy, I'm also active in teaching and supervision. So I supervise interns, folks who are doing their internship at KU Med. Um, I also work with psychiatry residents, um, hematology and oncology residents and fellows, providing different presentations, um, teaching them about kind of different areas of mental health and the role that that might play in their practice. I'm also active in research, so even though it's not a main focus of my role, I'm able to work on a number of different projects, have my, my kind of, uh, you know, my hand in a few different things, hopefully moving towards publications at times. Um, and then I'm also pretty active in different hospital-wide com committees and service projects as well. Um, our department has a diversity committee, for example, and so I co-chair that. Um, and there's a lot of different opportunities to, to be involved, uh, which is really exciting. Now, therapy, kind of what is it? Uh, and what do I do uh, when I see a patient? I think that there's a lot of stigma um, around therapy. I think oftentimes, although it's changing, oftentimes therapy is seen as something that is uh, for people who are quote unquote crazy. Um, what I say to people is I don't see people who are crazy. Um, I don't, I don't agree with that term, but what I do see is people who are going through some pretty crazy times in their life faced with some pretty, pretty crazy things. And, and cancer certainly would be one of them. Um, and so what therapy is, it's really what I kind of see as a collaborative, uh, working relationship to help people manage distress related to what they might be going through. Um, and so obviously there are, um, challenges, emotional challenges that come with dealing with cancer, going through treatment, facing potentially end of life. Um, my role is to, to help support them and help, um, them cope with those emotional challenges that are a part of that anxiety, depression, sometimes learning how to manage the physical effects of treatment, sleep, fatigue, pain too. There's a lot of different therapeutic approaches that allow an opportunity to, to focus on, on some of those issues. Um, so I think that becomes a really important piece to keep in mind is that cancer is not just all physical, it's emotional too. And so my role isn't to focus on the chemotherapy or the radiation or the surgery. My role is to focus on the emotional after effects of that. Now, more broadly, kind of stepping away from cancer psychology specific a lot of different people for a lot of different reasons seek out therapy, maybe the end of a relationship, maybe you're someone who is a bit more prone to anxiety, you might seek out uh, therapeutic support for that, someone who's going through a period of depression, maybe just a really significant life change that's, that's pretty tough. Therapy is something that uh, can be incredibly beneficial for all kinds of people for all different reasons. I'm always going to be someone who's going to be an advocate for therapy regardless. You don't have to have a serious mental illness to pursue therapy. In fact, it can be incredibly rewarding and incredibly meaningful in helping just with some self-discovery discovery as well. Um, and, I, and I feel like I have the opportunity to be a part of that for a lot of different people at some pretty significant stages and pretty important stages of their life too. Um, 
Now, that's not to say that, that this job doesn't come uh, without its challenges. Obviously, as you might expect, it can be emotionally taxing. And so, um, you know, it becomes essential that I know what I need to do to take care of myself and all of this too. A lot of focus on my well, a lot of kind of checking in with myself, making sure that I am living as healthy of a life as possible. If I'm not taking care of myself, I can't be there to take, help take care of other people as well. So some of those more challenging days are maybe when I'm, I'm working with patients that are faced with end of life. Um, those are a bit more emotionally taxing for me. Sometimes we, we see patients who maybe are a bit resistant to change and, and aren't willing to kind of follow through with some of the things that we talk about. Those are a bit more challenging too. But overall, for me, the rewards so significantly outweigh those challenges being able to and not take gr take for granted the fact that I'm a part of people's lives at, at pretty significant periods, being able to see significant changes that are made in people's lives, um, developing those really close, meaningful relationships and getting to know those patients as well. That's kind of why I do what I do. Um, certainly it's about helping, but it's also about connecting uh, with people too. So that's kind of my last message for you. If psychology is something that you are interested in, I think one of the, the important pieces to remind yourself of is through psychology, through, through therapy, we connect. We have an opportunity to connect to other people. We have an opportunity to support other people. Um, we have another, uh, an opportunity to see people grow as well and, and maybe have a part in that. Um, I, I hope that this has been helpful. I hope it's provided some clarification. I know it's brief and I know it's quick, um, but I hope it's provided some clarification on what it means to be a psychologist, what it means to, to become a psychologist, um, and, and also recognize that there's a lot of different paths when it comes to psychology. There's a lot of different areas that you can go. Um, and so it's probably out there if you're interested. Um, Again, thank you so much for letting me be a part of this. I wish you luck in the future. Um, I hope that you find your path, whether it be psychology or not, uh, that fits with you. Best of luck and, uh, and take care.